Today we will begin graphing quadratic equations. There are three basic forms that we can use when we graph quadratic equations and each of them gives us some useful piece of information that will help us graph it, but we can really find um, all of the key points and we'll go through them uh, when we want to graph a quadratic. So we're going to start off with this guy up here. Here's our equation, and that equation is given to us in standard form. So that's your ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 equals y. So that is your standard form. When we have an equation given to us in standard form, it gives us this guy. Oops. Sorry. It gives us this guy here. And that is your y-intercept. Remember, a y-intercept is a number for y, 0 for x. So this is going to be 0, 3. That's your y-intercept. And this guy here is very much like our old friend, y equals mx plus b. That is something everybody remembers from pre-algebra, algebra 1. And of course, you remember that when we were in this form, Notice this one is similar, no parentheses, and we have the x's first and the number. This number here is your intercept. Factored form. Not all quadratics can be factored, but if they can be factored, we're going to do it. So y is equal to, so it's parentheses, x in the beginning of each. And now maybe I'll look up here, it's a little easier. We're going to multiply to get a positive number. When you multiply to get a positive, our numbers are plus plus or minus minus, in this case, minus minus. Then we're multiplying to get three. There's only one way to do that. This is your factored form. When we are in factored form, what we can get out of this is the roots. And that would be roots. Remember roots, another word for that. We used that one last week or this week. Um, the answers solutions. And a lot of times when we talk about an actual graph, we're going to use the words zeros and x-intercepts. All of these are synonyms. Same exact thing. So if you want the solutions or the answers or roots here, then remember it's going to be the opposite opposite. x is equal to 3, x is equal to 1, and these are going to be your zeros or your x-intercepts. Remember, x-intercepts look like this. Number for x, zero for y. Well, here's my x, and here's my other x. Two answers, two x-intercepts, and I'm expecting two, right? Because there's x squared. If there's ever not two, there's a reason why there are not two. So here I have three and one is my x-intercepts. I'm going to start graphing this. So I'm going to use 3 and 1. Well, here's 3 as an x-intercept. Here's 1 as an x-intercept. And I have 3 as a y-intercept also. So 0 up to 3. Okay. These three points are on my parabola. Moving on. Vertex form. Okay, so here is an, another really useful form. I will be giving you equations that are in vertex form. If we had to find this, from standard form, you would have to complete the square. We're going light, I'm completing the square this year, so I'm going to give you the vertex form. If we have vertex form, what you can get out of that is the vertex, obviously. And if you remember from earlier in the year, this is how we find the vertex. And we always said two things, opposite, same. So we want to go with opposite same. So your vertex here is 2, negative 1. So if I plot that over 2, down 1. That is my vertex. So I kind of look like I can, looks like I see it happening here a little bit, but if I cannot find the vertex form and if it's not given to me, this is what I'm going to use. This simple little equation here, x equals negative b over 2a, gives you the x-coordinate of your vertex. If we were not given this form, and if we started with the standard form, 
found the x y intercept, factored, found the x intercepts, and then we wanted to find the vertex. I would use this formula. Remember that the a, b, and c for quadratic formula are always pulled out of a standard form equation. So in this case, if you have y is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 3, you're going to use negative b over 2a. So figure out what a is. It's 1. And we need b. b is negative 4, so now we have to plug it in. Negative b, so that's the opposite of this, positive 4, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So our x coordinate is 2. Yep. The vertex is 2 comma something. Well, how are we going to find the y coordinate of our vertex? We're going to plug it in. So we have our equation here, and y is equal to 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3. That's 4 minus 8. That's negative 4 plus 3. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So that's how you can find your vertex if you do not have vertex form given to you. So we plot this point. Here's the thing. This formula right here is actually the equation of the axis of symmetry. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is an invisible line in a parabola. And it's x equals, hopefully you remember it, x equals lines are vertical through the x-axis, and our axis of symmetry in this case is x equals 2. So here is our axis of symmetry. I'm drawing a dotted line because it's not part of the graph. It's an invisible line for symmetry, meaning whatever is happening on one side happens on the other side also. It goes perfectly down the middle, left and right sides match. Well, it looks like I can kind of draw a little bit over here on the left. Remember, it's not a straight line. Parabola is curvy, curvy. So the right side has to match it. And I kind of see these points are nicely balanced, so I'm happy there. But this point has to have another point on this side over here so that that remains balanced and symmetric. And it looks like if I count two spaces to the axis of symmetry, I probably can just count two more to get another point on the graph and it remains nice and symmetric. Here's this, and that's that. And that's what our parabola is gonna look like. So our parabola is going to have a vertex. Let's a different color. Here's vertex. We know how to find the vertex. Use this formula, x equals negative b over 2a. We have our x-intercepts. I'll call them zeros. Those are our x-intercepts. Factor and solve. We also have our y-intercept. And the y-intercept is given to us if we have standard form. We just pull that number out all by itself. And then just look for some kind of symmetry to find another point if you want to your y-intercept. Now, of course, the y-intercept would not be easily found here. The y-intercept is not negative 1, because this is all the same equation, and you see it's not negative 1. Negative 1 is the y-coordinate of your vertex. So there are other things that we're going to have to do, but today we're going to stick with standard form. So standard form is going to give you your y-intercept. Hopefully we can factor and find the x-intercepts, and then we're going to use this formula to find our vertex axis of symmetry, and you see how the whole parabola is balanced. The only hang up here is going to be when we find our roots, our x intercepts, if it cannot be factored, then we have to solve this quadratic equation a different way. We learned several different ways of solving a quadratic equation, and the other one that we are going to use if factoring doesn't work is the quadratic formula. And we'll look at a couple of those today, too.